Okay, we are now going to cover the spline stroke draw mode. Like the previous two draw modes, your brush radius will dictate just how wide the stroke is. But you can change it in different points. So I'll show how that's done. Let me just go ahead and create my first point here. And I'll continue creating points. I'll hit escape to drop the creation of this curve. We have the option to change the point type. We have three to choose from. You have a standard spline where the curve goes through the point. But if I right click, I can make it a hard edge or right click again to cycle to a B spline where it's weighted. Now the spline no longer goes through the point. When I hover over a point and it's highlighted, I can click and drag to edit or reposition it. Now by default, it's going to attempt to attach it to the surface beneath your cursor. We have a little toggle here that will allow you to detach it from the surface and then make modifications such as scale or rotate. Let's do that. Let's detach from the surface. And then we can choose to rotate or just transform all. When we transform, we can scale the entire thing. We can rotate. You can scale along a single axis and so on. Once you're done, you can reattach it to the surface again. Okay. You can also change the point type as you are continuing your stroke. As you're making it, you can just go back to the last point or any of the points and right click on it to change the point type. But if you want to continue making your spline, you can do that by simply clicking on the endpoint. You do have the option to utilize the same brush radius along the curve, which will use your current brush radius. You can also hide these helper lines, these little white or grayish lines if you so choose. You have an edit points table. When this table is active, you can see numbers now located over each point. That will allow you to make some of them sharp or change them to B splines. You can also adjust the brush pressure level on each point or simply choose to edit the pressure profile. Start with zero pressure and we can add points intermediately if we want then I will hit the enter key to apply it we can also hit apply here or we can clear the spline you can choose all B splines here or a closed spline so 3D Coat connects it, but it's still going to apply the brush stroke along the curve rather than filling the interior of the curve. So use the closed spline draw mode if you want to fill inside of a closed spline. Let's enable our displace mesh. So we didn't have a very high depth value, and that's probably the reason why. So let's go ahead and hit the delete key. Let me go back to edit points mode because it's still in the transform mode here. If I hover over the green spline and I see a green highlight, that is a visual indication that I am free now to add a point if I need. If I want to delete the point, I can hover over it. When it's highlighted, I can hit the delete key. If I want to change the radius at any point in the path, I can do that also by hovering over the point. I change my radius first. Then when I come over the point and see it highlighted, I can click on that to see the brush radius now changed. So let me right click and drag to the left just a bit. I'll click on this one, and now it's changed. Okay. Modify this one just a bit too. All right. So uh, let's hit the Enter key. 
Mm, okay. <laughs> um, not so good. We need more polygons for this to look nice and smooth. I could bump up the tessellation by going to the view menu at the very bottom. You can adjust the tessellation per UV map. But I already covered that process in the previous video, so we won't redo that. We'll just move on to the next draw mode instead. Now I'll hit the escape key to drop the curve. I will hit the delete key to remove that. There's a little visual artifact at the bottom. And sometimes that happens with the show displace mesh option. When you undo an operation, you may have to just refresh it by turning it on or off. We have two more to look at in this video, and that is the stamp draw mode and the movable stamp draw mode. Let me try to use a brush alpha. It's a little more interesting. You can try something like that. I'll now hit the E key and choose the stamp draw mode. Then I can click to place my center point. And then as I drag away from that center point, I am actually scaling the brush. And as I move to the left or right, I'm rotating as well. This can be very helpful when you know exactly where you want to place it. The other stamp draw mode is helpful when you are not exactly sure where you want to place it. It gives you a visual preview as you apply pressure and move your brush around the object. Even when you have control pressed to indent, you can see the result live. So it's in a sense like working with live booleans because this works the same way in the sculpt workspace with high polygon or voxel models where you are extruding inwardly or outwardly. It's very interactive. And then also you can use the bracket keys on the keyboard in order to make scale adjustments or the nine and zero key above it to rotate it if you need while you are moving it around. Okay. So with that, we're going to stop the video here and resume with the other draw modes in the next video. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.